In an age where so many people put every detail of their lives on public display in social media, the idea of anonymity, being in the broom closet, and practicing stealth witchcraft can seem impossible, or at least implausible. Let's look at how it can be managed, though. Lorelai Black here from Blade and Broom, doing my own version of stealth craft by remaining off camera again this week mainly because things are chaotic in the cottage right now, and I don't have anywhere to film. Big reveal coming soonish. I've got links down below, and you know that liking and subscribing helps channels that you love to grow and produce better and better content, so thank you for all the ways that you show support. You are fantastic humans. I've done another video about the broom closet that explores why a witch might not be publicly forthcoming with their practice. You can check out that video in the links, but the super short version usually boils down to safety. Emotional safety, physical safety, job or housing security. There are lots of reasons why we might need to keep our craft practice a secret. The harder part is, how do we keep it hush hush? So I have some tips for you today on how to do that. Number one, forget the witchy starter pack. Whatever you have read to the contrary, you don't need an athame, a wand, a pentacle, a cup, etc., or any other similar combination. Yes, you might need tools, but feel free to color outside the lines. Think about what your tools are doing for you. Are they representations of the elements? Are they vessels for spirits? Do they direct or shape energy? My first athame was actually this letter opener, and I kept it on my stealth altar at the school where I taught a little bookshelf space behind my desk that featured this, a potted bamboo plant given to me by a student, a stick incense burner, and a jar candle. You could have things like incense burners and candles with actual flame in them in schools in uh, the early 2000s. These days, if I were putting together a stealth altar, it might look less elemental and more spirit-based. A wee spirit dolly. A box of odd bits for casting lots. I'd probably still have a plant of some sort. Probably a bowl of stones. So number two, think about substitutions for prohibitive items. Since I started this channel, I've had a lot of viewers ask about swaps for stuff that they can't have. Mainly blades, fire, and booze. All the things that make life worth living for. I'm joking. No, actually, I really like those things. <laughs> when I die, if you're trying to summon me, that's a good place to start. Blades, fire, and booze. My advice is to let logic and common sense guide you. If the blade's being used to direct or cut energy, you can do that with a wooden tool like a wand or with your fingers. If it's being used to draw blood, use a lancet like diabetics use. If you're cutting cords or carving a candle, use scissors or a toothpick. Oldie timey witches, particularly poor rural ones, may do with a simple knife and maybe some pins. They used what they had. You can do the same. As for fire, booze, or harder to come by herbs, the same principle applies. I mean, think about it. If you're a teen and you're making an offering to a spirit, cream and honey is going to be equally as acceptable as bourbon. Note, I also believe you'll be able to summon me with cream and honey. That sounds delightful. Tip number three is to pack it away. Altars and supplies that you can tuck away inside other containers can keep prying eyes from seeing what they shouldn't. I kept my altar inside an old travel trunk for years. It had a shelf that was perfect for the altar, and my herbs, journals, and talismans all fit underneath. When I didn't need to be stealthy anymore, my magic exploded all over the house, but for a long time, this worked for me. I've seen folks do cool things inside closets, a bookcase cabinet, a footlocker, sheds, and more. Tip number four is actually to hide in plain sight. If you don't have things like daggers and pentacles, most of your witchy gear can be kept right out in the open without drawing negative attention. It might still draw some attention because it's cool looking and has big energy, 
but you can also do some invisibility magic to help it go largely unnoticed. If someone does see it, they're just likely to think you have a funky, eclectic style. And tip number five is to go digital with things like your books and journals. Most witchy titles are available as PDF and Kindle versions, so you can still have a great occult library without terrifying your grandma when she comes to visit. And cloud-based journals reduce the chance of a housemate reading your witchy wanderings accidentally on purpose. So these are the best ways that I can think of to practice a stealthy version of the craft, one where you aren't compromising on your practice, but you aren't jeopardizing your safety because of your stuff. What suggestions would you add? What have you done to shelter your practice from view? Share in the comments. I hope you found today's chat thought provoking and useful. And if so, please bless me with the magic of the like button and tell your witchy friends that there's good stuff happening here at Blade and Broom. And if you'd like to learn more about how to practice the traditional folkloric witchcraft that I teach, or just to keep up with my shenanigans, then download my free app, The Thread, at the link below and click on News and Notes for the freebies. I'll see you back here soon, probably next week, for more witchy goodness. Bye, friends. Here come I too.